like strategy-wise? I think there's more to it. I mean, if you look at it, right, I've worked with Eric for you know six years now, and seven almost, right? And it, I've learned a lot from him personally. I mean, he's a great technologist first and foremost, and as a result, he's a great role model for you know. I mean, I, six years ago, I was a starry-eyed kid, you know, doing stuff, and you know, there are lots of people like that, yeah. right? So it's actually great to work with somebody like Eric because at the, at first and foremost, he's a great technologist. So. And you get to learn a lot by working with people like Eric. Um, he know. understands the chessboard. Exactly. And he's yeah. playing the poker match at the same time. <laughs> so uh, this is what's going on. I mean, it's yeah. a rapidly growing market right now it on is. all levels, the at infrastructure. Yeah. Um, so it's challenging. You know, so the question I have is, um, there's no question you guys have rapidly moved from a number two far behind Cloudera um, coming out of Yahoo. But the expertise was a deep bench that's well documented, we talked about it. You guys also kind of changed your tune a little bit on the mojo, like hey, we're not fighting Cloudera, we're collaborating. And that was a great, it's always kind of been that way, but the press tried to create the, yeah, something there. Yeah, I mean, there. It's, it's understandable. I mean, you know, that stuff sells. Well, that's what the like, press wants. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's issues, right? Yeah, uh, I don't blame people for that, but even if, even if you went back to Eric's uh, keynote last year, right? Essentially, his message was, if you want to work in Apache Hadoop, you're going to be a friend of Hardworks. Right? And that's the bottom line. We all understand that if this platform doesn't go anywhere and it's all stuck in, in fighting yeah. or whatever it is, at the end of the day, we all survive when Apache Hadoop does, does well. So as a result, I think everybody understands you know, that we've got to work together, we've got to take this platform, make it better and better and better over time. Because frankly, I mean, you know, Hadoop has been around for six years. Uh, we'd like to see it be around for 60 or you know, 100 or whatever it is. So it's going to take time. To well, it's sure. clear you guys are, it's clear that you know, everyone wanted to see, as yeah. you guys come out with your GA product, uh, Hadoop Data Platform, what's your move, right? Mm -hmm. So, your move's pretty clear, it's, yeah. you know, it's pretty obvious. 100% all in on the technology, 100% yep. open source, all money goes towards development, period. Yep. Hadoop, yep. Apache, 100%. Yep. On the business side, it's pretty specific. Create bulletproof, enterprise Absolute. grade, yeah. quality, yeah. De OEM deals. Stable, yeah. I, um, reliable. OEM, yeah. that's the right word. Yeah. Uh, business deals, yep. with the big guys. Yeah. And let that be the pull. Yeah, and we also um, we also talking to a whole bunch of individual customers. They're, they're in the Fortune, you know, five, ten, whatever you name it. Um, but you know, we feel like this is the easiest way for the enterprise as a whole. I mean, our deals with the big partners, right? We feel like that's the easiest way for Hadoop to actually get you know real use cases, real pull in the enterprise, instead of you know knocking you know doors one by one, right? I mean, we've we've been doing that one by knock doors one by one, mm -hmm. but we feel with partnering with people like Microsoft and Teradata, we can actually take this technology and make it much more uh, you know prevalent in a in a significantly smaller time frame. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we 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 commented, wrote in my blog post that you guys are putting yeah, everyone great, on, actually, on notice. Yeah. Um, with this disruptive technology, but at the end of the day, the big guys need help, because they're, I mean, I don't want to say you guys are small potatoes compared to what they're doing, but in a way, from a dollar standpoint, the revenue that EMC and the IBM HP are doing are, are off the charts. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're a rounding error in terms of <laughs> like what they could do in terms of revenue. We want to so, change that. Up, so, <laughs> but, but, but the disruption you're providing in their market yeah. is significant. Yeah. So, you know, I think you guys are creating such a, such a cost reduction of data store and data warehousing, that they're eventually going to need to reposition their products. Microsoft, for example, huge uh, risk on the IT side. You got Office, you got you know their, just mm -hmm. their enterprise mm -hmm. IT marketplace mm -hmm. is so big. Yeah. So for Azure to kind of bundle in with you guys is a smart move. Yeah. But you yeah. guys got to be ready. So talk about the product. So as you guys launched it, why those features you guys announced, the provisioning I noticed was interesting. Mm. That's a key thing. Yeah and the H catalog. So yeah. can you talk about those two products? Why specifically those two? So, I mean, clearly, um, let's talk one by one, right? So, Embody. Um, you know, the first step anybody needs to do is, you know, install Hadoop, manage it, monitor it. And our feeling, I mean, we've talked about this in the past, right? I mean, our, our game plan always has been, we want to do stuff in the open. We want to use, um, you know, we want to put all the code in the open so that there's no, uh, people are not worried about proprietary bits and so on, right? And more importantly, we also want to have open interfaces so that you can interact with you know, um, Hadoop, uh, or the whole Hadoop stack. And also we want to use open technologies available. We don't want to be reinventing the wheel. If, I mean, of all the things we can do, I'd rather spend time you know, improving HDFS and MapReduce and HBase than rather than improving writing custom you know, monitoring technology. Right? That's, that's not you know, a useful, <laughs> useful way to spend our um, time. Let the, let the ecosystem pick that exactly. up. Exactly. Exactly, and we want to be able to you know integrate with you know an IBM Tivoli or an HP OpenView because frankly at the end of the day, you know people have invested you know 
enterprise have invested millions of dollars in an existing technology, right? Nobody's going to come in and say, you know, our message is not, you know, take Hadoop and throw away everything else you have. That just doesn't work, right? So what we'd like to do is keep Hadoop open, keep Hadoop um, um, useful enough that people can also integrate with their existing stuff. Mm -hmm. And as as they see value, they'll, you know, Hadoop So you want to work on the core, basically what you're saying, core. Core, and also make sure that we integrate with, you know, your existing tech, whether it's databases, you know, mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's what we did with Teradata and um, Aster for Edge Catalog. Um, this this allows us to actually integrate Hadoop in a, in, a, in a very nice, clean way, and a very simple way, which is what we're all about, right? In a simple way in your existing stuff, in existing enterprise technology, so you can you continue to get value out of your investments while you get, you know, a good force multiplier, if you will, with Hadoop out of it. The metadata is a big message too. With H Catalog, I think a lot of people are kind of overlooking the importance of the metadata services. Absolutely. And, and we talked about Doug Cutting about Avro. Yeah. Uh, we just found out that Sam, ex Cloudera uh, Labs guy, uh, sold his company to Twitter, uh, is working on some mm -hmm. stuff open source on Avro. That whole notion of cataloging out metadata, where do you see that going? Because that's something that developers want. They don't want to have to recode yeah. everything over again and embed code yeah, in code. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's not just the developers, but also you know your uh, tools, right? Your tools don't want to understand where it's an HDFS, for example, because they've been built with certain assumptions in mind. And also, at the end of the day, like I said, the developer wants to think in terms of data sets. He doesn't want to think in terms of directories or files, right? You want to think, oh, I have a data set which is which represents my monthly revenue for July, right? Not this is slash foo slash bar whatever, right? So this way, you know, people are. We want to make it easy so that you take your existing existing knowledge, existing experience, and allow that to Hadoop to actually get much more benefit from Hadoop. Otherwise, it's going to take us, you know, the next you know six, seven, eight years before people understand this stuff. Because frankly, as technology uh, is new, it takes time, right? I mean, it's every technology adoption curve is stud. So we want to be able to make it simple and easy for people to actually take their existing knowledge and experience and use Hadoop in that context um, without having to, you know, learn a whole new stuff whole new bar stuff. Um, with Edge Catalog, like I said, uh, one of the interesting stuff is you know, the way you can now think of tables. Um, the tables could be in edge base, the tables could, the actual data could be in edge base, could be in, in a database, it could be mm -hmm. in uh, HDFS itself. But by allowing this notion of a table at a metadata level, you can actually integrate all your existing apps without worrying about you know, what do you do when data moves from one place to another and mm -hmm. so on. Which is actually some We've got some really great validation for that in the market. I mean, we're excited about the work we did with Aster, uh, Teradata, on SQL Edge. So there's a whole bunch of work we've been doing and we can actually expect more of that. Cool. Let's talk about um, MapReduce 2.0 or, mm -hmm. or Next Gen MapReduce as it's called. Uh, so, you know, we've heard, uh, it's, it's kind of in the alpha phase at this point, but explain to uh, our audience really what it's all about. Right. So, I mean, if you look at uh, Hadoop MapReduce, Hadoop today, right, you have two essential parts. One is the HDFS, which is a data storage layer, and you have MapReduce, which is a data processing layer. Now, unfortunately, what was, what's happened is if you want to process data in HDFS and you're going to have you know, massive amounts of data in mm -hmm. HDFS, your only option was MapReduce, right? Now, MapReduce, the programming model, is great for a whole bunch of use cases. Um, now, I've, I've worked in MapReduce for almost six and a half years now, and I really like it. But along the way, you know, it's pretty obvious that MapReduce is not a panacea, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's got to take the right set of use cases, and to, not all use cases can be broken down into a MapReduce paradigm, right? So our effort um, along MR2, or we call Yarn at this point, is essentially a way for us to take Hadoop and generalize it so that you now have the option to run you know, different data processing applications within your same Hadoop cluster. Right, it doesn't have to be limited to MapReduce. You know, today it could be Open MPI. Tomorrow it could be real-time data processing. You know, day after it could be you know graph processing, right data processing. What we're trying to do is essentially generalize the infrastructure of Hadoop to the point where you get much more return on your investment. Right, mm -hmm. people are not going to be comfortable buying a five million dollar Hadoop cluster just to do MapReduce and another two million dollar cluster to do something else. If you can allow them to run both apps in the same cluster. It's not only easier for you in terms of a CapEx perspective or OpEx perspective, mm -hmm. it also is easier from a operational perspective. You don't have to have two different sets of people right. monitoring your cluster, or two different sets of tools monitoring your mm -hmm. clusters and so on, right? So this way we, we think that uh, allowing both of these to run the same Hadoop cluster is a big win for the whole ecosystem. And you'll actually see um, some of the work we've been doing um, with our partners to actually show up to see you know, really cool applications which will show up on, on MapReduce, on Hadoop itself. 
and that's exciting from where I stand. Right, so, so what are some of those applications? What are some of the possibilities that are going to be av available to uh, enterprises once MapReduce 2.0 really kind of comes to fruition? So uh, one really good example is MPI, right? So um, I want to give a shout out to folks at uh, you know, Greenplum who've been doing this stuff, right? So the, the essential, if you look at OpenMPI, right, it's one of these you know, classic and well-known um, MPI uh, programming uh, APIs out there, right? Mm -hmm. So what this now means is you can take your OpenMPI application and point it instead of exist, you know, today OpenMPI can work with Slurm or Talk or any existing resource managers. So you can now take OpenMPI and instead of pointing to Talk or Slurm, you can point it to Yarn or MR2. And suddenly, without your knowledge as a developer, you start using uh, Hadoop to doing M for MPI processing. Right, so it's actually mm -hmm. a really useful way, a really useful um, way for people to start, you know, getting more value out of their Hadoop clusters without investing. I mean, frankly, it's almost if we do our job well, it'll be zero investment, mm -hmm. right? You have your Open MPI app, you're using it with something else, just point it to Hadoop and start working, right? And that's a pretty, you know, strong, um, strong feature set, if you mm -hmm. will. So that's MPI. So we we hope that that should be available fairly soon. Then we have you know things like our real-time data processing needs, right? There are a bunch of people trying to solve right. the real-time stuff. MapReduce is great at batch processing, mm -hmm. um, not particularly so at real-time, but you, you, I mean, you, know, you guys probably saw the Storm talks or the S4 from Apache and so on. They're talking to a lot of people there. There's interest there to take their uh, applications and port it so that it works on uh, MR2. And it actually, suddenly, you know, two days, uh, you know, two quarters from now, you'll be looking at you know seven, eight different apps running on the same Hadoop cluster along with MapReduce. That's actually significantly, that's significantly cool from where I stand, mm -hmm. uh, just as a technologist, but mm -hmm. it's also great for you know, your community. Talk industry. about some of the other projects. So for the folks out here watching, Arun is the co-founder of Hortonworks. Um, he's a tech geek, he's a developer, he's a part of the core team over there. Um, talk about the event here for the folks who are watching. Mm -hmm. um, they're on Twitter, they're probably looking at the Twitter yeah. stream and watching our live stream, uh -huh. but outside of that media, this. They want to know what's going on. Could you just quickly share the vibe here, the couple of sessions, what's the audience? Uh, you mentioned there's some business stuff, but there's mostly developer focused yeah, all yeah, the way. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the really cool parts about you know, Hadoop Summit is uh, so much of it, you know, given its uh, genesis in Silicon Valley, right? There's so much technology here. Um, it's really nice uh, to be able to get to a place where you know, just behind us, um, you see a whole bunch of uh, people, you know, showing the stuff they've been integrating with Hadoop, building for Hadoop, or using Hadoop for. But there's also a whole bunch of people talking about how they're going to take Hadoop um, and improve it, A. There's also a whole bunch of other people talking about how they're already using Hadoop in their ecosystem or in their production where, warehouse or whatever it is. And it's really fun to look at these use cases and think, you know, it's kind of blows my mind. When we started on this six years ago, we had, you know, we had we never saw this explosion. What's, your what's the most mind-blowing thing you've seen here at the event? Um, at the event, um, I unfortunately haven't much time yet. Or just or if within the community. In the, yeah. Give me more, more, more I mean, range. I've, I've talked to a whole bunch of people who are using things like um, Hadoop and MapReduce to do genetic sequencing, right? What they're trying to do is you know, come up with personalized medicine based on you, right? They're not trying to say, you're a 35-year-old male, but they're trying to say, you, looking at your, um, you know, DNA sequence. I mean, that if you look at the um, opportunities it provides, it's you know it's mind blowing and awesome, right? I mean, the fact that we can make such a difference to you know you know humans as a, as a whole is actually insane from where I stand as a technologist. How about the, the, the most mind blowing thing you've seen within the community of the code base? Is it Name Node? Is it some of the Avro? Is it Storm? What are the some of the cool projects that you go, wow, I love that one. That's got a lot of potential. I mean, definitely, uh, I'm going to plug Yarn. <laughs> That's not a surprise, but. Which one? Uh, MapReduce 2. Okay, um, got it. But yep. of course, um, you know, Edgebase is great. I mean, you see Edgebase everywhere. Um, you know, big kudos to the community. Um, there's uh, Edge Catalog. I mean, you see a whole bunch of people starting to pick it up. Um, there's also um, things like S4 um, and Storm and all these things, which are coming into the ecosystem. That's a, it's really exciting time to be in this ecosystem and see all these technologies being developed. Um, you know, I'm not smart enough to build all of them, but it's really cool to be able to learn from all these guys. But in the developer community, let's just talk global developer community from super, like we say with HBase with Todd, yeah. you know, the C or uh, machine code to yeah. developer frameworks. Yeah. In between that range of, I would call developer IQ, there's uh -huh. opportunities, right? Uh -huh. What are you seeing in the developer landscape coming out of the Hadoop community? Tools, frameworks, you saw Spring, for example, had a lot uh -huh. of success. 
yeah. selling to say VMware. Yeah. Um, is there a framework around Hadoop that, that is going to be adopted that's the most traction? And then on the development side, what tools and and whatnot that is the most popular? I mean, if you look at um, you know the easiest way for things like um, MapReduce to be get used in enterprise, right? Um, I would say things like Hive and Pig are the big ones, right? You, you'd say you know SQL is something everybody's familiar with. SQL is something that a lot of whole lot of tools um, are familiar with, right? I mean, a lot of tools are built with SQL in mind. A lot of tools talk to SQL in the back end, right? Uh, so I would say things like uh, Hive and uh, Pig are some of the things we see all the time. And it's really exciting to be, you know, in this market to see you know what we can do from from where I stand. I mean, I look at myself as, you know like an assembly guy at this point, if you look at Hive or, or MapReduce, right? So I would look I look at myself as, as an assembly guy, and I'm trying to figure out what are the tools I can provide to Pig or Hive, so it makes them better and faster and more mm -hmm. efficient. Um, and definitely Edge Catalog is in the same space. Yeah. So you're an assembly guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hexadecimal is like your second language, <laughs> debugging registers in the old days. Uh, uh, we actually had COBOL reference on the cube earlier. Like, that was come the first, on. right? That was, the, I think, describing what, Hive or Pig? I forget <laughs> what it was. Hive scripts, it's like writing COBOL. Um, yeah. and so. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your partnering strategy. Yeah. Um, you know, we see there's all the vendors out here that, have, uh, that are, you're partnering with, uh, some open source, some not. Um, what, how important is that partner eco ecosystem, kind of building on top of Hadoop? Uh, mm -hmm. How important is that to Hadoop success, but Hortonworks success? I mean, um, frankly, we, we think of uh, Hadoop success as you know as being very closely tied to Hardware success, right? Um, on the other hand, like I said, a whole lot of enterprises have a whole lot of investments in existing vendors. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that really excites me about our partnership with Microsoft is it opens up Hadoop to a whole new ecosystem, right? It's it's not just you know Windows as the operating system, but it's a whole ecosystem you get with Microsoft. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's Excel or PowerPoint or SharePoint, right? right? And the, by opening that up, uh, the use cases we get, the whole, the new set of users we get, mm -hmm. is incredibly exciting. Same with our partnership with Teradata. I mean, Teradata is, you know, you know, prevalent in so many data warehouses. The fact that we we can we can take uh, HTTP uh, um, and you know, Edge Catalog and all these components mm -hmm. there, integrate well with Teradata, means that not only people get value out of it, but we also learn a whole lot about how things things um, how we can do better with Hadoop mm -hmm. with our partners. So it's an exciting thing for us in, uh, in terms of our partnerships. So you talked about you know getting more value out of your existing IT uh, mm -hmm. investments mm -hmm. through Hadoop, through Hortonworks, uh, but what about the potential for overlap? I mean, when you go into a company like Teradata, where you know this is a, a, a long-time data warehousing vendor in the more traditional mm -hmm. model, mm -hmm. um, and you come in and you say, well, we've got this new way to process tons of data, it's inexpensive, it's scale out, uh, so you're, you're partnering with them now, but is there some tension there, or how do how do those conversations go? I mean, the, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, people um, are you know great technologists everywhere, right? I mean, Teradata has been in this business for a long time. They understand the use case that Hadoop is great at. We we understand the use case that Teradata is great at. So we are you know fortunate to be working with them. And at the end of the day, it's a win-win situation for both Hardenworks for Teradata and for the customer. As a result, we, you know, we're very happy working with them. Um, so uh, again, in terms of uh, this event, uh, you know we're seeing a good crowd, 2,500, uh -huh. I think, or close yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, close to it. Fantastic. So uh, you know what? Uh, looking ahead, so you know we're here. Ne we're here next year. Let's say we're sitting here uh, on the cube. <laughs> what, what can we expect to see? What is your, kind of on your roadmap, uh, your priority list for the next six, 12 months? Um, so I mean, first thing foremost is we want to make sure that um, Hadoop, like I said, it has to be enterprise ready. It has to be stable and, and reliable. So we're spending a whole lot of time adding a lot of the enterprise features like HA and mm -hmm. so on. We also invested a whole lot of time in, uh, you know, in the future of Hadoop, which is Hadoop 2. Um, there's we spent uh, work on Yarn. You, you can you can expect, you know, multiple programming interfaces to Hadoop, mm -hmm. uh, MPI or or graph processing or whatever it is. So we definitely want. Uh, you guys were here last year. I mean, at least in the Hadoop world, right? So you've seen a lot of development in the last, you know, eight months or so. Mm -hmm. We can definitely expect that to increase. Um, it's exciting that people like uh, Microsoft there are investing, so you can you can expect that there'll be much more, you know, engineering investment going on into Hadoop itself. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the most exciting part. Sitting as you know, wearing my Apache hat, it's really exciting to see all these people invest in Hadoop um, and make help make Hadoop better and better for everybody. So my question is, what should we ask Eric tomorrow? He's going to be in the cube. He's always <laughs> uh -huh. shy. Uh -huh. um, what should we ask him tomorrow? <laughs> um, 
ask him, you know, about me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll do a personal <laughs> evaluation yeah. on you. Okay, exactly. how's his code? Have you reviewed his code yeah. lately? Uh, he's going to say, you know what? You don't document. Yeah. That's just you're an assembly guy. That's why. Um, yeah. Everyone, thanks for coming on. Congratulations on all your success. Um, thanks, Lord. Um, really uh, proud to watch you guys grow like you have, and watch you guys really change and come out uh, as a scrappy startup. Really mature. Take the high road all the way. Great to see the, the, the good citizenship. And on the product side, you guys are now not a far number two. Uh, I think you're really right behind Cloudera. And uh, I love the approach and uh, we'll see kind of how this shakes out. And you know, see it's pretty clear what you guys want to do. <laughs> and keep us uh, updated. Thanks Thank for coming you. on theCUBE. Again, thanks, us, thanks for having me on theCUBE. Uh, okay. you know, from all of us at Hortonworks, pleasure. Hortonworks uh, is uh, putting on the event. Soon this event's going to be so big, they'll have to get rid of it like Cloudera <laughs> got rid of Hadoop World. Um, obviously a sellout, the demand is strong. Um, the Apache community is, is, is so on fire right now. HBase, HDFS, MapReduce, MapReduce 2, uh, great innovations, and all that's going to be empowered in with big mainstream applications. Uh, we're expecting big ecosystem growth. Uh, Arun, thank you for coming on theCUBE. We're right back with our next guest after this short break.